SNL. Both Moxon exploits the streaming media landscape. Like the pop album before it, the structural unity of the S. N. L. Episode is in flux, its wholeness disturbed by social media's love of fragments. This can be a good thing. To the delight of comedy nerds, the lid that used to cap the so called 10 to 1 spot, the time just before the end of the show, when weirder humor often airs, has recently come off. Absurdist sketches such as Disney and Teacher Fell Down have floated up toward the top of the show. And, no matter where they land in the live broadcast, they are drawing more and more attention and YouTube views as the week continues. On Sunday, in a pure internet development, fans leapt at a cut for time sketch. This one skewered the awkward moralism of 90s sitcoms. There are a slew of these sketches that have enjoyed an online afterlife in the past several years, many of them watched millions of times. A 2016 classic from the Cut for Time vault features Kristen Weig, Kate McKinnon, and Vanessa Bayer as goddesses of creation, pitching their ideas to a sentient, glowing crystal, like comics in a celestial writer's room. Who's the audience? McKinnon asks. The real SNL writer's room is well aware that the show's audience has fractured and multiplied across the country and the planet via a handful of different devices. It's such an honor to be here hosting Saturday Night Live, Claire Foy, the British actress and the star of The Crown, said, after stepping onto the stage for her opening monologue. Or, as we call it in England, Sunday morning. Foy seemed to be making a time zone joke, referring to the fact that S. N. L. Fans in the UK have to wait until Sunday for the show to be posted online. But she could have easily been referring to the growing viewership on this side of the Atlantic who eagerly await the updates to S. NL's YouTube channel like children on the lookout for Santa Claus. The internet also eliminates any hiding spots. Just before 1 a.m., a sketch about the unbearable anticipation around the probe of the special counsel, Robert Mueller, had the women of S. NL. Performing a parody of Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. Mueller, please come through, Cecily Strong, McKinnon, Villa Senor, and their fellow cast members sang in front of a portrait of Mueller wearing a Santa hat. Cause the only other option is a Kustriaid Africa. Many viewers begged S. NL. To release the sketch as a clip, but the show's Twitter account has so far posted only a photo. Vigilante fans filled the void, taking it into their own hands to tweet amateur videos of the sketch taken from their television sets. That is great, a user calling herself Abuelita Diaz wrote on Sunday morning under one such post, which had hundreds of likes. I need to watch it later today. This old woman falls asleep early. Watching an entire episode of S. N. L. Can be a slog at times, it's true, but there's still something pleasurable and quaint about keeping an eye out for all the cracks that a live comedy show offers, laughing at prop malfunctions, marveling at the sketches that go down in flames, contemplating the speed of elaborate costume changes, or just enjoying a pitch-perfect sketch that is neither really absurd nor topical, like the war in words in which a First World War soldier receives ever more disorienting messages from his wife back home. I am positively starved for context, he scribbles back in frustration. Some people enjoy both the fragment and the hold. Watch it all, and then email your favorite sketches to friends who don't. Dear social media Twitter person on SNL tie for the excellent job you did tonight, a woman who goes by a middle-aged lady in a flyover state wrote beneath one tweet that shared the sign-off clip from the end of the show. I wish I could send you a pie or knit you a sweater or something. Go hug your mom for me, would you? And, she added, go to bed ASAP.